Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12 says, The Lord shall open unto thee. Ah, let's back up. Let's just go ahead and read verse 1 on down. Hallelujah. We're after verse 12, but we'll read everything around it. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all of his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord... Listen, God has always made conditional promises. Salvation is a conditional promise. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You don't call, you don't get saved. That's real simple. See, you know, everything's free. Well, it's free with a condition. Okay? Throughout the Bible, give and it shall be given unto you. You know? It's not shall be given unto you unless you give. So that's a condition. The condition of being given unto you is you give. Isn't that right? Uh, God, <clears throat> God says that he'll, um, he'll, he'll give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, multiplies your seed sown. The condition of being multi having multiplied seed is sowing it. So God, the Bible's full of conditions. Hello? You know, there's people who try to teach that there aren't any, but there's full of them. And if you don't meet the condition, you don't, get the, you don't get the result. You don't get the promise. Here in Deuteronomy, well, that's Old Testament. Yeah, but I'm, I'm amazed at how many people claim the blessings of Deuteronomy, but don't want to meet the conditions of Deuteronomy. Right. Now, if you're going to claim the blessing, you're going to have to meet the condition. Somebody say, amen, or oh, me. Amen. Or if you, know, if, if, if you want to, you can go, help me, Lord. <laughs> All right. And I just went to Deuteronomy 26. Hallelujah. So it says here, If you'll hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do his commandments, which I commanded this day, that the Lord God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. <coughs> so we have, we have to hearken to his voice, and we have to obey his commandments. That is the condition upon which the following will come to you. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, I'm under grace. It doesn't matter. I'm sorry. It does matter. Even in, even in Corinthians, written by Paul, who everybody calls the grace preacher, he said, uh, you, you know, he'll multiply your seed. So he didn't say that you just, uh, grace makes you get it even if you don't sow your seed. That's works if you sow your seed. No, that's the condition upon which you get the answer. That's how things work. Prosperity works the same way. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if... Thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Again, he sets the condition of obeying God, being led by the Spirit, hearing the voice of God, doing what God said. You don't do what God says, you don't get the blessing. So there's a lot of people that say, well, if God's good and he's this and he's that, he will do it anyway. No, he's not going to condone your slothfulness or your laziness or your lack of obedience. Okay, his love for he, he loves you. I love my kids, but I don't reward them for disobedience. Amen. Why? Because that really isn't love. Amen. It's not love to not do what's right. Amen. Now that's what the world says. Now the world always is going around saying, you know, uh, if you love me this, if you love me that, and all this kind of stuff. And the truth of the matter is, love doesn't just agree with everything you say or do, or act or whatever, no matter what. Hello. When my kids do wrong, they get chastised. Now they don't get spanked anymore, but, you know, they used to get spanked, you know. Now they get a two-by-four on Nathan. Just knock him upside the head. And put him on the ground, then beat him with a stick, and then maybe he'll, you know, he'll listen then. Hallelujah. And you get to certain sizes, you know, just spank it don't work anymore. Two-by-four is what's come in play. Now, in old country folks, you're, 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 if you're an old enough country person and work in the back and stuff, you remember this. Uh, if you disobeyed it when you got a certain side, they just hit you with a tobacco stick. And I'm going to tell you something. You don't want to get hit with a tobacco stick. That they were oak and they were hard cured. I'm telling you, they, you hit, get hit one of them, knock you out. And they weren't about that big around, but they'd knock you out. Would, anyway, no, I'm, not, I'm not endorsing knocking people out, but... What I am saying is that, that, you know, God loves us. He's not going to do stuff for you anyway because he loves you when you're not meeting the conditions. That's not love. As a matter of fact, that, that's, 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 oh, that's wimpiness. Not, not taking the right position is wimpiness. Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. 
You know, churches do it. They'll say, oh, come on in. We don't care what you're doing. You can live as a homosexual. You can live as a lesbian. You can live in fornication. We don't care. We covered that Wednesday night. Second Corinthians, I mean, First Corinthians chapter 5. But, you know, the love of God says stop. Why? Because sin's destructive. Sin will hurt you in the long run. Sin will bring, bring destructive things into your life and won't bless you. God wants to bless you. And so you need to be free of things. You know, uh, I'm trying to get into prosperity, but I'm on this condition thing. We've got to meet the conditions. Amen. Moving right along. And if you obey and you hearken, that, 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 verse 3. And here's what's going to happen if you do all that. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, the fruit of the ground, the fruit of thy kind, cattle, the increase of thy kind, the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. That's your checking and savings account. Hallelujah. Bless you. That's what they, their storehouses where their, was what their wealth was. They bartered with that. It was a financial exchange system. And so when you were, your storehouses were full and your barns were full, you had lots of money. It was your, that's how you bartered. We barter with money now. When you go to work for somebody, they don't give you a cow at the end of the week. They used to. Well, okay, it depends on where you work. In most cases, you don't want a cow with, you know, a leg or an arm taken off for the taxes. You want, the, you want, you want your cash. We, we barter in cash. as primarily, we use a cash system. And so you, bar, you, you, you give your time, you get a paycheck. And then you go to take your money to the grocery store and you barter. In other words, you exchange money for the product. Okay, that's, that's our system now. In these days, it was grains or cattle or whatever. So if your storehouses and barns were full, then you had a lot of money. It was wealth. It was a wealth system, all right? And God said, you'll be blessed in the basket and in your store. You'll be blessed when you come in, blessed when you go out. The Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They come out one way, they'll flee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon you in the storehouses, and in all that you set your hand to. He will bless you in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish you and holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if you shall keep, if, throws that back in here again. You shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. We've got to walk in the ways of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And all the people of the earth shall call, uh, see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods and the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy ground in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Verse 12, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give rain unto the land in this season, and to bless all the work of your hand, and you shall lend to many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If, here we go again, thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words of the command. Uh, which I command you this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. So we have here the promise of God that he wants to give and open unto you his good treasure. It is God's desire, and say uh, desire, it's his design and his plan to open unto you the good treasure. Now, his good treasure, now he set stipulations upon how to get there, and it is obedience and following after him. Amen. Imitating God, following after God, doing what God said. Well, God's good. He's going to do it anyway. No, he's not. He said he's not. He said if you do this, he's going to do it. As a matter of fact, verse 15 starts out, and if you don't hearken, all these curses are going to come on you. Now, let me say this. In the New, well, God, God doesn't curse us in the New Testament. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. God, Christ being made a curse for me. Yeah, under, under Jesus, walking with the Lord, you're redeemed from the curse. But I'll tell you what, if you could put yourself into the world system, you're putting yourself into a cursed system. If you put yourself into the way the world operates, you're operating in a cursed system. Amen. Which is why it's important to tithe. One of the, one of the primary pos prosperity commandments and acts of obedience is to tithe. Why? It takes your finances out of the cursed system and puts them into the blessed system. God's system. Heaven. You don't tithe and you're not in that system. Matter of fact, God says if you don't tithe, you're a robber. That's what he said. Wherein have we robbed thee? And God says, in tithes and offerings. Amen. And you're cursed with a curse, even this whole nation. Well, see, the earth is already cursed because of the fall. So God doesn't have to pronounce a special curse on you. Hello? All you got to do is operate in the, in the cursed realm. 
Does that make sense? Hallelujah. Now see, um, okay, we live in, you know, STDs, some of the STDs that we thought were about gone are making a comeback. Because people are more, all of a sudden we got this new given to the flesh thing. Everybody just be, be fleshly, even the church, be fleshly. And hell's opened up and just unleashed sexual sin in America. It started with the ordaining of, a, of an Episcopal priest, gay priest. You know, that, that, that just opened, opened up a hell. Opened up hell and all that stuff was released. And now, but all of a sudden we got, we got STDs that, that weren't heard of much for a long time, all making a comeback. Why? Because people are operating in the cursed system. See, the, the, the Word of God teaches that we're supposed to be... Um, uh, reserve ourselves for our, our spouse when we get married. Now, folks, unless you get something from a blood transfusion, which is rare, people say, oh, you get it from blood transfusion. 99.9% of, of, of the diseases like that are transmitted. They're called STDs for a reason. They're not called blood transfusion diseases. Okay, they're called STDs. There's a reason. That's how they're transmitted primarily by the vast majority. But you see, if, if men and women would all follow God's law and God's plan, you wouldn't have those things. And they wouldn't be spread. That went over big. But it's the truth. You know? Uh, had, had AIDS been tra treated like a disease that it was, any other disease would have been quarantined, and they would have quarantined anybody that was con had that disease. They would have locked them up in a tent somewhere. If it had been tuberculosis or something where they were out in public, anything that was that was that was that deadly and transmitted, they would have they would have quarantined it and killed it out. But it was a political disease, so it spread and got into the got into the blood systems and all and blood blood supplies. It was a, it was a um, political disease and it was treated as such. Anonymous, you can't even tell who. I mean, doctors can't even say this person's going out and having sex with somebody and can't tell anybody that they got the AIDS because of the the laws that were passed. Okay. But if everybody was doing what they're supposed to according to the Word of God, we wouldn't have had these things in the first place. Okay? Why? Because they put themselves into a cursed position by disobeying the Word of God. Real plain and simple. Hello? I know that goes... They don't like, people don't like to talk about sex. I look, you, you watch it all the time on television. You watch it on billboards when you ride by them. It's on Facebook. It's on the Internet. It's everywhere you go. We come to church, everybody gets... And usually get like that because they don't want to hear the, what I got to say because what I got to say is against what the world's saying. The world's saying, go, go do it, go do everything you want to do, be whatever you want to be, have whatever you want to have. And what you're doing is you're putting yourself into a cursed system of relationships. Hello? Well, we're in love. We can't help ourselves. Oh, yes, you can help yourself. Isn't that right, Brother Benny? Hello? Hello? I know, look, look, look I'm, from, I'm from the 60s and 70s. I remember peace and love and, you know, uh, you know, just, if you can't be with the one you love, honey, love the one you're with. Yeah. And then what's love got to do with it? You know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Bear yourself, son. I mean, you know, that, that, so we, everybody was putting themselves under a cursed system. And it was, it was a crazy era. Well, now that, that's in that realm. But see, God has laws concerning that. And if you stay out of that system, you'll stay blessed. Your body will be blessed because you, 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 you handle and conduct yourself according to the Word of God. Now let's come back over to finances. If you operate in the realm of the world system, and you don't, you don't sanctify your money by tithing. See, tithing sanctifies the rest of your money. It brings the blessing of God on it. Now, that don't mean you can take the rest of your money and go out and, 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 and order hits through the mob. And get, but that's not, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is that when you tithe, you take yourself out of the world system. You take your dependency out of the world system. Because how many know that when you look at your money, you go, I got to take 10% and give it to God. You don't have to. It's, it's still free will of your own will you take your 10 percent and give it to god amen that that 90 percent doesn't look like it's going to make enough but i'm going to tell you 90 with god is more than 100 without him the world to eat your money hello and they're eating it anybody bought gas lately now our president said uh, uh, according to his energy policy gas prices must necessarily go up 
And they have gone up from $1.89 a gallon to three thirty nine, dollars to three ninety nine, dollars and that kind of stuff in the past few years. And staying above 3 all the time. That was his policy. It was, it, he said they must necessarily go up. That was what he said, and they have. Hello? Well, see, if you're not operating in God's system, that, that looks like you can't make it. Have you been to the grocery store lately? Have you all noticed that food prices at the grocery store have gone out the roof? I mean, you can't hardly find milk for less than $4 a gallon. Some places you'll have it on a special or whatever, but that's just to get you at the store deal. Milk, two eighty nine dollars a gallon, you know? Bread, $14 a loaf, you know? You can't even get a, 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 you can't even get a two liter drink for 89 cents anymore. On sale, you can't get, you get it for $1.25. At Walmart, you might get them for a dollar for a week. But yeah, you, how many of you remember 79 cents, 69 cents, 89 cents, two liter drinks? When they were regular price, they were $1.19. Now they're $1.50 each. Or $1.89 in some places. So, you know, things are going up. Well, see, if you don't have your money blessed, your hundred is not going to be enough to sustain you. Taking the 10, giving it to God, will bring the blessing of God on it and put that 90 more than the 100. It's just the way it works. Because why? The blessing of the Lord makes you rich. Hallelujah. Amen. So, God tells Abraham in Genesis 17, 6 and 7, I'll make thee exceedingly fruitful. I'll establish nations of thee. Kings shall come out of thee. I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in, listen, in their generations. For an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and thy seed after thee. So God makes a covenant. Let's say, I'll make you exceedingly fruitful, and I'll make this exceedingly fruitful. Now, that means lots of stuff. He's going to bless. He's going to cause him to have kings come out of him. He's going to establish his covenant. Who's he going to establish his covenant with, folks? With him and his seed, and even his seed after him in their generation. Now, when we read, the, you know, God told Abraham in Romans, the fourth chapter, that he's going to bless him and bless him and multiply and multiply. Now, King James says, in blessing, I will bless thee, and in multiplying, I will multiply thee. I think Wayman says, I'll bless you and bless you and increase you and increase you. The blessing of Abraham is the blessing of multiplication and increase. Abraham just went out and, and just sat out in the middle of a desert somewhere and got richer because God was blessing him. Lot was hanging out with him, and he was getting richer. And it was, it got so, they got so rich together from the blessing that they had to separate because there was too much there for them. The land couldn't bear their wealth. Hello? Now, see, now that's talking about something. When you think about the fact that somebody's so blessed, just getting under their shadow makes you get blessed. Because that's what happened to Lot. Because Lot won't live in right. We know that. How do you know that? As soon as he got to Sodom, he started living like the world. The Bible says that Sodom... Sodom vexed Lot's righteous soul daily. His soul was getting vexed. That's how, how bad he got vexed that when the people, and they were at the town given to homosexuality and perverse, sexual perversion. When, when the people came to get, his, to get the angels, <laughs> Lot offered him his daughters. Now, that, listen, I'm going to tell you something. You come to my house wanting to, you know, be a sexual pervert, I'm going to shoot you. I'm not going to give you my daughters. But you see, when you get vexed with the world, you start thinking screwed up. Your thinking gets messed up. You start thinking in ways that aren't biblical. You know, I mean, they, they came, they wanted the angels because they, 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 they said they were fair to look on. We well, you know, in, in heaven, you're, you know, angels are basically genderless. But here they come, they, they, they're, they're all given to immorality and sexual perversion, and they want the angels. Now, what's going to happen is if they try to grab the angels, they're probably going to get cooked. And I guess Lot didn't want barbecued city folk on his doorstep. I'm not sure what he was thinking. I don't know why. If the angels showed up, I don't know why he didn't realize that the angels could take care of themselves. But he says, here, take my daughters. Now, is there a dad in here that would offer your daughters to a, a, a pervert mob that was, that was crazed with sexual appetite? How many men in here would just turn your daughters over to them? What happened? The Bible says his righteous soul was vexed day by day being in the influence of that and not under the influence of his, of his uncle Abraham, he went into the city and got under the influence of the, of the spirit of that city. And see, that's, you've got to be careful who you hang around. I'm honest with you now. Now look, the Bible, we, we, if, how many were here Wednesday night? I know we're talking about prosperity, but there's some things you've got to say here. How many were here Wednesday night? All right, better thing. How many weren't here Wednesday night? All right. Wednesday night we talked about, we, we, were, we were in Corinthians with Paul. 
And in, second, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, he starts it out this way, you know. It's reported among you, it's commonly reported among you that there's fornication. Even such a, a style of fornication that uh, not even named among the Gentiles, a man should have his father's wife. The, boy was, the man was living with his stepmama. Took his daddy's wife and started sleeping with her. And, and they were coming to church! Acting like it was okay. And Paul said, you know, we just got to love on them. We, if we just love on them enough, they'll turn and they'll change. That's not what he said. He said, your, your, your self-complacency and your uh, basically obstinance to dealing with this is not good. Now, I've already judged it. Here's what I'm doing. I'm turning him over to the devil to destroy his flesh so that he'll be saved in the day of the Lord. And then he goes on and says this. I wrote to you in a, in a letter not the company with fornicators. And then he goes on and says, now what I meant was not fornicators that are in the world, nor idolaters or foul mouth or whatever. He said, because then you've got to come out of the world altogether. But if anyone calls himself a brother and he's a fornicator or an idolater or foul mouth, he said, I said, don't have any company with him. As a matter of fact, don't even eat with him. Now that is totally opposite of what we hear today. Is that not? Is that not totally opposite of what everybody says today? They all say, well, we just, we got to love on them. We got to, we got to be, you know, we just got to love on them. We got to wrap our arms around them. You know, and the, Paul said, put them out of the church and don't even go eat with them. And that's what the Bible says. Why? To shame them. To let them know that that lifestyle is unacceptable and you're not going to be able to come into the church and live contrary to the word of God and get away with it. Now, he said this, and then he comes back in the second letter and says, now, Receive him back in. Obviously, he had repented, lest he be overcome with much sorrow. It worked. But I'm telling you, the, the mindset of the world is messed up. And that's why I say, you've got to watch who you hang out with. Paul said in the church, if they're living in sin, don't hang out with them. Where's my bobblehead? Go get my bobblehead. I, need, I think I need my bobblehead this morning. Because I'm not getting a whole lot of stuff. I need a pastor at bobblehead so I can bobblehead yes to myself. I'm serious. Go get my bobblehead. I'm going to have my Bible here. I'm going to put them up here and shake yes. See, we want to walk in things. We want to walk in blessing, but we don't want to walk according to the Word of God. See, unwise counsel. I got in this because I got over the lot. I wasn't planning on going there. But I got the lot. Lot got into the city, and that spirit of that city began to vex him. Now, let me say this. Obviously, it was, it was a slow process over a period of time that he wasn't even aware he had become vexed. Let me say this. His wife got so vexed that when they left the city and told not to look back, she couldn't help it, and she became a pillar of salt. Thank you. I got my own amen corner. You don't amen or say yes? All right. Pastor Ed Bobblehead. Y'all like my bobblehead? You don't, you don't like my bobblehead? Huh? I like my bobblehead. All right. You don't say amen? My pastor at bobblehead is going to amen me. All right. Glory to God. And so, Lot got vexed day by day. His righteous soul got vexed by being around the wrong influence and the wrong counsel. Amen? Now, while he was under Abraham, what was happening? We're, we're getting some, I, I don't, we've got too much something, Dick, I'm sorry. I'm hearing pops, I'm hearing deep whatevers. Hallelujah. What happened when Lot was with Abraham before he went into Sodom? We, we, I told you, you have to go study it. He prospered. He just flourished. The, the land got, their servants got so many that they, couldn't, they just couldn't study. They had to split up. But he went into the city and got, got under a different influence. Under that influence, he began to fall away without even realizing it. So much so, as we said, he offered his daughters to the townspeople. When they, when they finally did flee, his wife turned and looked anyway. See, that his, his failure to maintain the proper influence affected his, his wife. And she went off even further to the point it cost her her life. What, what am I saying? It's right to stay under the right influence and around the right people. Come on. Bobblehead it. Come on. All right. All right. Here we go. All right. Hallelujah. The pastor had bobblehead sermon. So the land, the land couldn't handle so the blessing of increase and multiplication. It was on Abraham. Got on people around him. 
I think the church needs, we, we need to get back around people who are going to cause us to, to grow and to flourish in the things of God instead of looking for people who can help us stay defeated or stay lower or take us down. Their counsel takes us down. Yeah. Amen. You know, the spirit of faith. You now, we look over, forget. I, I'm gone. Second Corinthians. All right, it's not 2 Corinthians, is it? Help me out, Bill. We, we, 5.13, I was looking at 4.12 for some reason. 2 Corinthians 5.13? 4.13? Oh, yeah, I was right at 12. I don't know why. I knew it was, okay. I was looking in that spot. We having the same spirit of faith, according it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. The spirit of faith is caught. The word of faith is taught, but the spirit of faith is caught. You've got to be around people who have it on them. You've got to be around people of wise counsel. You've got to be around people of, uh, of integrity. Why? Because it'll get off on you and it'll help keep you on the right track. So we need, to be, we need to constantly be putting ourselves in the position of godly wisdom and godly counsel so we can walk in the things of God. When Lot was with Abraham... He prospered. I'm telling you, you go, you hang around the right people and their spirit of faith concerning money and stuff will get off on you. Their spirit of faith concerning other things will get off on you. Hello. Debbie posted yesterday. She sent me a message. I rebuked the fact that Duke Power said I'm not getting power back until Wednesday. She got it back yesterday. Well, I'll get off on you. You know? You, you get around people who pray for the sick, people getting well. Brother Benny has a healing ministry. He's bold about his healing ministry. He's just bold. You get around people like that, it'll get off on you. You get around people with prosperity mindedness, it'll get off on you. But in the same way that'll get off on you, get around uh, blood sucking, mealy mouth, depression bomb, anti everything, and it'll get off on you. Hello? In the same way that a lot hanging around Abraham, the, the prosperity got off on him, he got an asylum, and the perversion got off on him. Well, he wasn't a pervert. I think offering your daughters to the townsfolk's pervert, perverse. I just think so. I don't know about you. That sounds perverse to me. Hello. Y'all hear you going home. All because of what was influencing his life. So what we want to do is we want to, I'm trying to bring this back to prosperity, and I'm not getting there real good. This is, this is a part of it. I mean, if you, if you go through life with Eeyores, you'll become an Eeyore. If you go through life with Tiggers, you'll be a Tigger. Hello? <laughs> pouncy, pouncy, pouncy. Shannon's a Tigger. She pounces through life. Then you get around some people. Oh, God, I don't know if I'll make it another day. It's so bad. I woke up this morning and the sun was shining in my eyes and well, it's a good thing. To say, oh, I needed dark. I needed clouds of despair. <laughs> you get around people that, and you hang around, and you'll get depressed. Yeah. Hello. So we need to be around people of faith, yeah. people that believe that God wants us. To be, I'm telling you, I, the, the past week and a half, when we started receiving, now, I'll be here, honestly, you know, just kind of looking, I thought, you know, look, where the church has been, the finances, I thought, you know, we get we get an offer five, six hundred dollars, and you know, praise the Lord if we get a thousand, we have glory to God. You know, I'd be excited. You know, go ahead and give them that much money. Then, we'll, you know, we'll start paying them as much as we can, as quick as we can, to get them up so they can get their projector. I, mean, I want them to get their projector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got 2,000 before I could blink. Then we say, well, look, we, we got to have more stuff. We got 1,500 before I could blink. Get, I mean, we're getting, we're not getting a cheap computer. We're getting a brand new computer with the Final Cut Pro 10 on it, a big 27 inch monitor. 16 gig of memory on the computer. I mean, we're going to be cooking with gas. When those people have to do the rendering, like, you know, instead of sitting there fighting, you know, they, they, oh, God, it's going to take six months to render this one thing. It's going to be blistering. They'll be, be dancing around the monitor saying, whoa, look at this thing go. Hallelujah. Amen. And so um, that's inspired me. 
if God's got that money that quick, there's more money for us here to take care of things we need to take care of in other places. All the bills are paid. And we're out of debt, glory to God. He need to bring that kind of money in in, in, in a week, $3,500 extra and above and beyond anything else. He can do more. There's more out there for God to bring. Amen. Now we need, and there's other places, areas we need, we need that kind of money to come in. Well, praise God. God's got it. I believe it's coming in. Hallelujah. I believe he's just releasing it to us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can you say amen? Is that, well, just getting around people of faith will get you, get you stirred up. But watch yourself. Get around people of unbelief and carnality, and it'll, it'll bring you down. It'll hurt you. Amen. Now, here, here's, here's the difference. Remember, if we talked about this. You know, the, the world, the wisdom of this world is earthly, sensual, and devilish. The wisdom of God is peaceful, easy to be entreated, and, and bears fruits of righteousness. People who are of faith are always wanting to bring you up to a higher and better place. People of the world are wanting to bring you down to where they are so they feel good about themselves. And they don't care who they destroy in the process, they'll take you down with them. Just so they can feel good about where they are. And that's the difference. They'll rob you of your blessing so they can feel like they're not by themselves. And people of faith are already walking in the blessing. They want you to walk in it with them. So, Abraham or Sodom? Who you want to hang out with? I didn't mean to preach all this this morning. That wasn't where I was going. <clears throat> but when I, when I talk about Abraham and Lot getting in on his blessings, I'll tell you something. There's people, ministers. You guys in Tulsa who think you're cooking with gas, most of you are operating under the umbrella of one of the big ministries that have been there for years and established God sent there, Rama. People go out of Rama and start churches in Tulsa all the time, and all they're doing is operating under the blessing that's already there in that city because of Rama. Yeah. Go, go out in Timbuktu and do it. Yeah. Let's see what you do when you go with somebody who doesn't even know who you are. Yeah. And you can't draw out of the places you've already made a relationship with. Yeah. Let's see you do it there. Yeah. That's how see God. You understand what I'm saying? They have seen people who do all kinds of stuff in Tulsa, leave Tulsa, and you never hear of them again. Because all they were doing, they, they weren't really operating in the way they should have been in the first place. They had the wrong heart, the wrong spirit. They were operating out from under the, the blessing of the other ministry. And when they got on their own, they got, got out there and... Well, they shouldn't have got... They, they weren't supposed to leave Tulsa. They probably weren't. And they probably weren't supposed to start a church. They were probably still there, supposed to stay there and help and be a blessing at the main church. But they got too, too big for the britches. God told me to leave and go down the road and start a church. No, he didn't. Hogwash. They're already set up to reach those people. If he told you to leave, go somewhere where you've where you got to go and, and, and do something where there's nobody there doing something. Thank you, Jesus. I can tell you this. There's a lot of people who... I know a guy, I know a church where, where an assistant pastor was there, and he, oh, everybody thought he was the greatest, you know, he, he left and almost just totally fell apart over time, because he, because he was operating under the anointing of the church, and he had the covering of that church, and then when he left, he didn't have anything. He, he built a little following in the church, and that hurt him in the long run. God can use people. I, I'm still talking about this, this association thing here. It's so important who we connect with in the spirit because it will affect our natural life. It's, it's vital. And here's an example. Like I said, this wasn't my sermon. I was kind of, I was going after the prosperity thing, then I just hit that thing, and the Holy Ghost drugged me over there. He, he drags me sometimes. Why? I'd rather preach all this stuff. You know, nobody's shouting amen, nobody's running. I was preaching about the blood and being washed clean, glory to God. People be running by now. I'm talking about relationships and who you hang around with. And get your neck all stiff, get your fur rubbed the wrong way, turn around. <coughs> the fact is still true. There are emissaries of the devil sent to churches, sent into people's lives, 
And they are there to bring you to destruction. They were sent by the devil. And they'll talk Christianese, and they'll tell you how much they love you, and they'll talk all this stuff, and they're emissaries of the devil. And they'll come into churches, and they'll, they'll make relationships, and they'll make everybody think they're just wonderful and better than peanut butter and sliced bread. And they're emissaries of the devil. Sent to bring destruction and disruption in the flow of the church, in your life, and it's not of God. Hello? God loves you. God's for you. God's on your side. Amen. There are, there are people who are, who, there are preachers who are emissaries of the devil, sent with messages to bring disruption and destruction in the body of Christ. Whether willingly, now in the Bible, basically, listen, the Bible talks about those who are, who are greedy for filthy lucre. There are ministers who, under the guise of ministry, are out there solely because they want money and they'll sell whatever they can sell. They'll sell any snake oil that people listen to, they'll give money to. And you say, well, that's judgmental. It's facts. I said, it's facts. And they're out there to rob you of faith and to rob you of anything they can. They're really, really out there to rob you of your money. Why? Because God, the devil doesn't want the money going to the kingdom so the kingdom can do the kingdom business. He wants to pull it off in the pools that are not meant for the kingdom so that people can just live lascivious, lasciviously and lasciviously and not, and not have it work for the kingdom. So, I'm going to stop. I've... I've Brother Hagin used to say, I done gone to meddling. <laughs>